What's up everyone? I'm ACP. This here is my kitten. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you all about um, the, the Khmer culture in general. So I live in Cambodia. The people here are called the Khmer people. And um, I've been here for about two months now and I just wanted to share what I've learned about uh, the culture, particularly how they uh, treat animals. Um, so keep watching if that's something that interests you or if you just want to see my kitty because I'm going to share how I got this cat. So um, in general, um, a good thing to know if you're in a, a just a different country or different culture is that it's never a monolith. Um, you might sort of have majority opinions on certain things, but it's not like every person thinks that way. So just like in America, you have people that have sort of more traditional values, and then you have people who have modern values. And um, it's, it's the same thing here, right? So traditionally, um, I'd say maybe prior to the last hundred years ago or so, animals were kind of just viewed as being animals, right? They either served a purpose or they didn't, and that was kind of it, right? Um, our dogs were bred mostly to perform certain jobs, whether it be hunting or guarding or something like that. Um, so that's kind of the traditional framework for what animals are, right? They're either uh, food or servants or something like that. Um, but obviously in modern day Western culture, we now have pets, right? Where the only purpose of the animal is for it to be a companion. And, um, you know, there are some people in Cambodia that view animals as companions, but most of them sort of have the traditional view of animals. And um, the idea that an animal could be a pet, that was something that was effectively imported from the West um, relatively recently. So about this kitten here, I was, um, you know, I, I sat down for lunch um, on Pub Street, and for those who don't know, Pub Street is kind of, you know, the, the cool hangout spot where there are lots of restaurants and clubs and that sort of thing. So I sat down at a restaurant, and um, just in general, you can kind of see uh, wild cats and dogs running around. They're just kind of part of the environment, right? Just the same way that in America you might see squirrels running around, we kind of pay no mind to them you will see um, cats and dogs running around. And some people might feed these cats and dogs maybe a little, um, but for the most part, they just kinda, you know, they either get by on their own or, or they don't. Um, and yeah, most cats are kind of scavengers. Some of them will hang out at restaurants, you know, hope you drop some chicken or something for them to eat. So I sat down and this kitten here you know, is kind of walking over crying, and I I felt bad, I did, because if it was an adult cat, I would just kind of pay no mind the way that I normally do, because I'm like, okay, it's an adult, clearly it's survived for X number of years, it probably knows how to find its own food, it's fine, right? You know, I'll, I'll pet it a little, um, but, but that's about it, right? Um, if I tried to rescue every stray cat that I found, I would have over 100 cats by this point. But this kitten here, I'm like, well, it's a tiny kitten. You know, I'm thinking maybe it's about three months old. You know, no mother in sight, no siblings in sight. And I'm thinking like, hey, is, is this kitten really going to be able to survive on its own? You know, it's probably about three months old without anyone taking care of it. Um, so I... You know, I just decided, you know, I, I, I like cats. I like cats. I like dogs. I wasn't planning on getting a pet right now, but I was like, man, am I really just going to sit down at this restaurant, have this kitten come over, and just eat my food and ignore the kitten and just go home? Like, is that really what I'm going to do? Um, I, I decided the answer was was no. So... I actually didn't even order food, because this happened right when I sat down. So I was like, all right, I need to figure out what I'm doing with this kitten. So I took the kitten back to my apartment. And, you know, online a bit, I tried to see if 
anyone else wanted to adopt this kitten or if there were pet shelters or anything. In Cambodia, they essentially don't have pet, pet shelters. There's some like animal sanctuaries, but they're mostly for animals that are like injured in some way. It's not like there's just a, a shelter that'll just take any stray cat that you find. Cause again, they just quickly have like hundreds and hundreds of cats. Like there just aren't the resources to take care of them all. Um, so, so yeah, point is I couldn't take it to a shelter cause it, it doesn't really exist. And, um, I, I couldn't really find anyone who wanted it. Cause again, it's one of those things. There's just tons of cats around, right? So if anyone wanted a cat, they would already have one. Like they're very easy to get. You just walk down the street. Oh, I want that one. And then you just take it. So like, it is kind of one of the things that like, if a cat's a stray, it means that people don't want it. Cause if they did, they'd already have it. So, um, yeah, wasn't really able to find a shelter or someone who wanted to take care of this cat on their own. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to keep it in my apartment, right? I'm going to get food you know, get a litter box, take it to the vet, do all those things, and just keep it in my apartment. So I told my landlord this, and he was like, yeah, no. Um, and, you know, I will say, you know, there's, of course, a rental contract that you sign when you get an apartment or whatever, same way you would anywhere. There's nothing in the rental contract that said anything about not being able to have pets. But, um... The laws here are very landlord friendly and keep in mind I'm a foreigner so like the law is going to favor me even less because I'm not even a citizen. So for the most part like even though the rental contract says nothing about like oh you can't have pets I don't really have a lot of options here right like I can't really try to like lawyer this guy into letting me keep a cat because it's, it's just not going to work right like. It, it, it's just not going to work. It's kind of, you know, my house, my rules, even if I'm making up the rules on the spot. So, you know, I talked to him and I, I, I tried to reason with him. I, I really did. Um, and I, you know, cause I was like, okay, you know what, why can't I have a cat or whatever? And I guess what happened was there was another foreigner who used to live there who had a cat and it like destroyed the place. So it's, it's one of those things that it's actually worse because, like, I'm a foreigner too, and now I want to have this cat, right? So the landlord kind of has this idea of, like, yeah, I'm not going to make, you know, the same mistake twice. And, um, you know, he was, from talking to him, he's clearly one of these people with traditional values, right? He was like, oh, don't worry, kitten's going to be fine, just put it back out on the street or whatever. Um... And I was like, yeah, I, I don't really want to do that. So I asked him, you know, because he was worried about the damage the cat would do. And I said, could I put down an extra deposit to cover any potential damages, right? Um, in general, things are very cheap here, right? Curtains are cheap. Um, you know, if you want to, like, repaint a wall or something, that's very cheap. So I was like, look, how much money do you want me to put down as a deposit? Or do you want, want me to pay more in rent? Right, because I know in America, sometimes they might say like, oh, the rent is $1,000, but if you want to have pets, then it's something extra, right? You know, $1,100, let's say. Maybe they tack on another $100 to your rent. So I, I, I said that. He was like, you know, is there any, any, anything I could do, right? Any, any extra money that I could give you, either as a deposit or for rent, to let me keep this cat? And he was like, no. And, and I, I clarified, you know, because... I said, is there any amount of money, any amount of money where you'll let me keep this, this kitten? He's like, no, no amount of money. And I was like, okay, I'm leaving then. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. He's like, oh, okay. So I left. Uh, this is, this is my, my new apartment now, and I'll, I'll tell you a bit about the experience coming here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of surprised me. In general, it's it's interesting because um, rent here, it, it's not like in America. Like in America, there's kind of like a a shortage of like cheap places to rent, right? I know because I, I live there. Um, whereas here, it's like the opposite. So keep in mind, most of 
most like a big chunk of the economy in this particular city, Siem Reef, is tourism, right? They, you know, they rely on expats like me coming there to like fuel the economy. So after COVID hit, like you just had all of these apartments sitting empty, and you do still have all of these apartments sitting empty. And even when I had, you know, moved into this apartment, you know, the one where the landlord's a dick who doesn't like cats, it had been sitting there empty for months. And his attitude was, hey, if you don't like my rules, like, go somewhere else. Even though, like, he, he might never fill that. I mean, he'll fill, fill the room eventually, but it'll take a while. It's not like he can get another, another tenant, you know, in there, like, the next week. I mean, even he had, he had four units, you know, four four units, one of those units was still empty. So when I got there, there were two units filled, two that were unfilled. After I was there, then okay, now three are filled, one's unfilled. So now he's going back to two unfilled again. Um, but yeah, his idea, I don't know, his view, I guess, is I would just rather not collect any rent than collect more rent by letting him keep a cat. So yeah, I, I don't know. He just must really, really not like cats. And he probably doesn't even like foreigners plus cats even more. So very quickly, you know, I was trying to look for a new apartment, right? Because I'm like, well, I got to move somewhere else. And I basically just on a whim, right? It's one day, boom, got to find somewhere else. And, um, you know, I looked at some, some ads or whatever because, again, Apartments are sitting empty. People are really aggressively trying to get these apartments filled. So I, you know, saw what looked like a good deal. Um, and it was 260 for a two-bedroom apartment. And I was living in a one-bedroom before, but I figured I'd upgrade to a two-bedroom because I have, like, friends and family that like to come visit me. It's good to sort of have, like, a guest room. So I was like, okay, $260 for a two-bedroom seems pretty reasonable. So I contacted the landlord, said, hey interested in your two bedroom and he was like oh okay great and i said okay i have one question for you will you allow me to keep a cat just one cat he said yeah it's fine you know as long as it you know you keep it clean right um so i i visited the apartment it uh it looked nice and they said uh you know you know what we'll actually drop the rent to 250 from 260 so you know they, they cut the rent by by 10 bucks for me and they said um you know i made it clear i wanted to move in soon you know like today tomorrow they're like well the you know the the two bedroom it uh, won't be available until november 1st they said but we have a studio apartment available and we will let you stay there for free until the two bedroom becomes available so they effectively gave me, you know, they cut the rent by 10 bucks, and they basically gave me like a two-week stay in the studio apartment for free. And the landlords are very nice. They're like, yeah, we have lots of foreigners living here. We understand, you know, you all like your your pets. So it's it's fine. So it just goes to show you, like, the dramatic difference in attitude that different people have, right? Because you have one guy who's like, absolutely not, no cats in the apartment other guys like yeah bring a cat and we'll even knock some money off the rent and let you stay here for free so difference is really in two ways you know one in the way that you know they're sort of open-minded in terms of how they view pets and animals in general but also just in terms of customer service right um it's sort of the same thing you know in america right there's sort of you might go to a restaurant um say, oh, you, you know, you made my food wrong. And they go, oh, we're so sorry. You know, we'll make you another one and then give it to you for free. And then you have like maybe some other restaurants where you say, oh, you made my food wrong. And they just tell you to, to piss off, right? Um, and it's kind of like the same thing here. So um, the moral of the story, I guess, is that um, they, things do work out. Um, at, least, at least they have for me. And, you know, some people really just don't get the whole pet thing. Um, but, but others, they, they do get it. So if you, you know, come to Cambodia and you're looking at an apartment, you think you might get a pet, my advice would be ask the landlord about it beforehand. Um, 
even if there's nothing in the contract about pets because some people don't even like it doesn't even occur to them that you might want to keep an animal in your apartment um so yeah thanks for watching let me know what you uh think about the story and let me know what you think about my little kitten